Hello again, I'm back and ready to show you how I make my jars. There are many different ways to make jars and lids, but this video will show you how I like to make mine. I use a bat system to make things easier for when I'm throwing in batches, but it is not required. The techniques in this video are a bit advanced, but I plan on making another more detailed video sometime in the future. To get started, I prepare two balls of clay, one being smaller for the lid. It is important to throw the lid and the body of the jar in the same session so that they can dry at the same rate to make it easier to properly fit the lid later when trimming. I start with using the larger ball of clay for the body of the vessel. I then center and form a cylinder, or whatever form I want my jar to be. I like to give my form some shape with a little bit of a belly. Pulling up the walls, I try to keep the rim thicker than normal. This will give me enough space to make the inserted gallery where my lid will sit. To do this, I use a finger, like so, to compress the rim making it thicker and flat. Then, using the sharp edge corner of my wooden rib, I gently apply pressure to the inside of the rim. I will have my finger under the inside of the rim to help support the clay as it is being molded by the rib on the inner wall. It is easy to collapse the inner gallery lip without that support. Once the inserted gallery rim is done, I will do some touch-ups to fix any outer rim flaws that may have occurred. I recommend sponging out any standing water before making your gallery lip so you don't accidentally bump it with your sponge, which I didn't do in this video. I guess I just wanted the challenge. Once the body of the vessel is finished, I will use these calipers to take measurements of the inner gallery to estimate how wide my lid should be. I use these calipers that have an adjustable lock to keep the measurement in place. Wire off the piece from the bat and prep for throwing the lid. Keep the body of the jar close by for any future measurements while making the lid. Using the smaller ball of clay, I will center it into a flat mound shape. I will utilize the measurement on the calipers to estimate how wide it should be and start from there. Depending on how I want the shape of the lid to be, I will begin opening the form. It is important to compress the inside floor to prevent S cracks later. I use a little red rubber rib for this. Just don't stab the bottom like I did here. Oops. <laughs> At this point, it should look like a very small, thick bowl. Taking my finger, I will start making the inner gallery lid insert. This is where the lid will fit like a puzzle piece to the inserted gallery on the main vessel. Once I have the lid started, I will then re-measure the gallery on the vessel and then the gallery on the lid. This will help give me the best visual on any adjustments that need to be made with finishing up the lid. Using that wooden rib again, I will then work on getting the inner lid insert properly fixed so as to match with the gallery on the body. You want them to fit together like a puzzle piece. I always make my lids and inserts a little bigger than the measurements from the body vessel to prevent it from being too small. No one wants a lid that doesn't do its job. Plus, it's always easier to trim away the extra clay later. Now that the lid is finished, I will wet trim off some clay to help shape the lid and wire it off the bat. I then set them aside and let them get close to a leather hard stage before trimming or carving. The timing on this can differ depending on your environment and how you keep your wet work. 
I use porcelain, so I dry my pieces slowly. For me, this can take up to a few days before they are ready. And now on to trimming. Here, I use a damp sponge and wet the wheel head and the lip of the lid. Placing the lid down in the damp spot on the wheel, then centering it into place and tapping the top of the piece will suction it to the wheel. This will make it easier to trim the lid without gif and grip parts or lumps of clay that may be holding your piece in place. While trimming, you can use the calipers from before to help measure how much you should be trimming away. Otherwise, you can eyeball it like I did here. I do recommend popping the lid off the wheel a few times to check on your fitting. Like I said before, nobody wants a lid that's too small. So be careful not to trim away too much all at once. I usually keep my lids a bit thicker since I do carve out a faceted texture. I carve out my feet and facet the sides instead of trimming on the wheel. I find that this gives my piece a little more personality without taking away from its functionality. any lidded piece, you will need some kind of knob or handle to lift the lid. With mine, I make these elegant and whimsical handles that are easy to grip and they add to the aesthetic of the piece. Here is the finished product. I hope you enjoyed
enjoyed this video? If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.